Hey guys, this is Mr. Decker. This is Unit 2 on Web Development. This is Lesson 3 on Headings. The computer science standards for this lesson are decompose or break down problems into smaller manageable sub-problems to facilitate the program development process and test and debug, identify and fix errors, a program or algorithm to ensure it runs as intended. Essential question for today is how can we use HTML tags to create headings of different sizes? This entire lesson is on code.org, so make sure you're signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming in the lesson on code.org. Watching this video that you're already watching uh, is mandatory, so watch the video as you work your way through the lesson on code.org. Best practice is to watch me do a step in the video, pausing the video, and then completing that step on code.org, and repeat until you're finished. All right, so let's head over to code.org. We'll click the link I've put there in Canvas for you. It'll open up a new tab. It'll put you on your dashboard if you're already logged in. If you're not already logged in, then the process, and I'm not going to go over this every video, right? Then the process is to click sign in and then continue with Google and get logged in by choosing your account. I'm in my teacher portal, so I sign in here. Now, once you're on your dashboard, look for CSD 1 6th grade for your section, 6th grade, and click on the unit CSD Unit 2 Web Development. And then it'll put you into the unit where you'll see Lesson 1 that you should have already done, Lesson 2 that you should have already done, and moving down to Lesson 3. Go ahead and click on Bubble 1 to get yourself started. The question of the day again was, uh, sorry, the question of the day again back over here is how can we use HTML tags to create different uh, headings of different sizes? We're working on headings today. This lesson continues the introduction to HTML tags, this time with headings. The class uh, practices using heading tags to create page and section titles and learns how the different heading elements are displayed by default. Our vocab for today is the word heading, which is a title or summary for a document or section of a document. New code we're learning today, the H1 tags and H2 tags, and we might even go all the way up to the H6 tags, just depending. Let's click continue. That's going to move us on to bubble two. Now, if we were in a normal situation in the smart lab, learning how to program live in here uh, on the computers, well, we might do something called pair programming where there is a driver and a navigator and two kids work together to work on their programming. But we're not doing that, so we'll skip this video. If you really, 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 really want to watch it for whatever reason, you can. But let's move forward. Just a pause here. Sorry about that. We had a brief interruption with the announcement over the intercom. So I am at school making this video right now. And, you know, interruptions happen. So anyway, moving forward, two heads are better than one. This HTML code has some bugs that are making the code pink. Do this. Work with your partner, and whenever you see work with your partner, just imagine that your partner is me, Mr. Decker, okay? So when I read that, you get the point. So we're going to fix the HTML, HTML bugs so that none of the code is pink, and uh, come up with one piece of debugging advice. Remember that you always have these uh, helpful hints over here. You can click on what is a bug. Bugs are mistakes in the code which causes it not to work as planned. What is debugging? Debugging is the process of finding and fixing bugs. Debugging is a problem-solving process, so use your problem-solving steps as you try to debug. Some examples of some bugs are, well, bugs can be anything that causes the code not to work as planned. Some examples are misspellings, putting code in the wrong place, using the wrong tag, or forgetting to close a tag. 
Why does the code sometimes turn pink? WebLab, which is all of this, this is WebLab. WebLab is programmed to automatically detect some mistakes in HTML. When it notices a mistake, it turns that code pink. The mistake might be in a pink or it might be somewhere before the pink code. You'll need to carefully debug to find your mistake. Why does HTML seem to work even when it's broken? Well, HTML is read by your web browser to generate web pages. Since people often make little mistakes when writing their web pages, browsers are programmed to make a best guess of what you intended to do. Sometimes different browsers are even, are even programmed to make different guesses. The only way to ensure your code looks like you, like you intend is to make sure you're always using tags correctly. All right, so let's take a look at WebLab again. Remember, you've got your file space, your workspace, and your preview area. Your preview area shows you what your website will look like. Your workspace is where you type all your code. And your file space is where all your files go. So if you add any pictures or anything like that, all of that will show up over here. All righty. Let's see. So we've got pink code down here, lines 12 and 13. So let's take a look at it and see what's going on. Let's see. So we've got an end paragraph tag and end body tag on the same line. Let's enter down and see if that makes any difference. Refresh and save. No, it does not. So what is the problem here? We've got a lot going on down here. Let's spread this out so that we can make more sense of it. Let's see. Oh, I think I found the error, but let's keep doing this. So I'm just putting my cursor between the paragraph tags to enter down so that the way that it's organized makes more sense and I can tell where the error is. So the error now I can see is on line 14 of the code where this one is. We've got a line here that needs a paragraph tag to be corrected. So let's create that. If you don't remember where the uh, greater than and less than symbols are on your keyboard, they're right above your space bar on the bottom row of the letters on your keyboard. So you hold down your shift key and you make the less than mark and then put your P and then hold down your shift key for your greater than symbol. And then over here, we still have a problem, right? We need to end this paragraph. So we have the uh, begin or start paragraph, but we need the end paragraph. And to do that, we need to find the slash, the forward slash, and it's right where you find your question mark. So normally if you were putting your question mark in, you would hold down the shift key and then hit that key, but you don't need to hold down the shift key. It's the uh, primary operator there. So let's see, let's refresh and save. Sorry about that, another announcement. So it's still showing we've got some problems up here on line two or not line two, on line nine of the code, we have an error. And it's the same thing. We need to fix the paragraph tag. So up here, we'll just make another paragraph, or begin paragraph tag, start paragraph tag. And the end paragraph tag was already correct. And that eliminates all of the pink error notifications we were getting. And it looks like everything's working the way it's intended to work. Now I'll remind you, like I said last time, notice that all of the code in here that we want showing up on our website is between this lines one through five of the code, but primarily it's between the body tags 
right? Between line five and line 17, between the body tags. So all of your code that you type out, or most of the code that you type out, anything that you want to appear on your website, you type it out between the body tags. All right. Now, hopefully you got your code working as well. Let's finish and move on to bubble four. OK. Bubble four says headings. So far, you've organized your content into paragraphs. Another way HTML allows you to organize your code is by using headings. A heading is a short piece of text that goes at the top of a section of content, like a title. Do this. Find the headings in the web page below and use the inspector tool to see the code that makes them. OK? We know how to use the inspector tool. We turn it on by clicking right there. It turns the button white and says inspector on. So now, remember, we're trying to find the headings in the web page and use the inspector tool to see the code that makes them. So my hobbies is, an, is a header. I'm going to make this bigger. Let's go up again. Let's use the scrolly. So we've got more room to work with down here. All right. So my hobbies is an H1 tag, which is the largest header tag. Soccer is an H2 tag, which is the second biggest. Five years is an H4, which is one of the smaller ones. H5, H6 are also small. And it's kind of a graduating scale. So H1 is the biggest header. H6 is the smallest header. And it keeps getting smaller the bigger that number gets. Here, This is within a paragraph tag, and that's coded correctly. Baking is a H2 tag matching up with this header. So my hobbies is the biggest one because we're talking about my hobbies, right? So this is the main header, the secondary header, H2 for soccer and baking. And then the third header is five years and 10 years, right? And then we've got paragraph tags separating these lines out the rest of the way down. All right. We agree on what the tags are doing. So let's change the code so that drawing and two years match the headings on the rest of the page. All right, so down here, line 24, let's make this an H, let's see, an H2 tag. So that fixes that over here. It's the same size as baking and soccer. And then five years and 10 years are both H4 tags. So let's fix where it says two years on line 25 here. We'll make this an H4 tag. Perfect. That knocks that out. Let's head on to the next bubble, see what the next challenge is. Heading sizes. Headings can come in different sizes. In this page, there are, diff are six different sized headings, but they are all mixed up. Can you and your partner figure out how to fix them? Well, me being your partner here. So we've got biggest, big, medium, medium, small, small, and smallest. So again, right, we've got H1 through H6 for our uh, options on heading sizes. We want to match it up to look like this. So we're going to go H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So H1 on line 6. H2. H3. H4, and I am, and this one's already correct, and H6 for the smallest header. And what that does is it makes the letters bold, 
So even though this is really tiny and might even be might be even smaller than regular text that shows up, right? So if I added a paragraph tag below this, right? Oops. And close that. Right, so this text is actually bigger than the smallest heading tag, but that header tag is what? It's a little bit different because it's bold, right? This is not bold. So that would be the difference there. All right, uh, we accomplished what they wanted us to do, so let's finish. And now we've got to answer a question here. This is a multiple choice, so let's see. Obviously, we've got the answer live right there. So let me zoom into this so you can't see that. All right. Look at the code below and predict how the headings will be displayed. Choose from one of the options on the right. OK, so we've got an H3 tag, an H1 tag for bacon, and an H6 tag for waffles. So the smallest one is going to be waffles, the biggest one will be bacon, and the medium one will be eggs. So let's see. I think this one is correct. So eggs should be medium, bacon should be big, and waffles should be small. Yep, submit. That is the correct answer. We're brilliant, brilliant. All right, brilliant, I tell you. OK, now we're going to consider some questions while we watch this video. What is debugging, and what are the four steps to debugging? So let's go ahead and watch this video together. Programming is a game. It's something that you and the computer are working towards together. But you're going to fail a lot. You're comfortable with failing because it happens. When you program, you have to get it wrong because that's how you learn. When you do make mistakes, you're like, okay, it's fine. I can fix this. Everyone gets bugs when you're... Uh-oh. What happened to my video? Everyone gets bugs, whether you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, everyone gets bugs. When a computer's not working the way it's supposed to, the way we want it to, we call that a bug. I get bugs. I get bugs. I get bugs. I get bugs. I totally get bugs. Everyone gets bugs. Debugging is basically just looking through your code and correcting your mistakes and fixing it. There are four really important steps that you want to follow when you're debugging. The first thing you want to do is describe your problem. So figure out what's happening. What did you want your code to do and what is it actually doing? Second step is you want to hunt for bugs. So figure out what is it in your code that's causing that. Step number three is you want to try out small solutions and see how they affect your code. And then finally, step four is you want to document what you've learned. Debugging is maybe the number one thing that can help you become a better programmer because you're seeing the mistakes you made. Can you help me with this for a second? Can you help me with this for a second? <laughs> Most of the time I spend debugging is finding the bug, but once I find it, it's easy to fix. What's this? Get out of here, bugs. Did your parents put that there? Maybe. I don't know. I like debugging with other people because they are like a second brain, which doubles your computing power, so you can figure out bugs twice as fast. Here we go. We did it. Experts make bugs. They make big bugs. In fact, your goal should be, as you go along, make bigger and bigger bugs that need to be squashed, because that just means you're doing something worth doing. You know, the more you practice, the better you get at it, the easier it will be. I can debug. I can debug. I can debug. I can debug. I can debug, and so can you. Love that video. That, everything in that was really, really awesome. Uh, debugging is a huge, huge, huge Part of programming. Um, I mess up my programs a lot and I have to debug them. You will mess up your programs a lot and you will have to debug them. You will have to debug them. You will have to problem solve. Problem solving is key. Learning how to think about 
things in terms of finding the solution, right? That's a big part of programming. So let me, let's take a look at this. So HTML headings trial, what you've learned in one or more of the following activities. Let me zoom back out so we can see what we're looking at here. All righty. So choose from the following activities. Let's do a lot of these. Let's do all of these. I'm going to do all of these. Debug the missing paragraph. Use your debugging skills to figure out why the paragraph has disappeared. OK. All right, debug the missing paragraph. Someone has submitted a bug report on this web page. Can you fix the bug? Just a second. All right, back to it. They made another announcement, but we're back to programming. Well, debugging, right? Someone has submitted a bug report on this web page. Can you fix the bug? All right. What they expected to happen is that they wanted three paragraphs, uh, one each on dogs, turtles, and birds. What happened instead is the turtle paragraph is not showing up down here in the preview area. I can see that. Can you see that? Right, Looking right here at turtles. Not showing up. Find and fix the problem that is causing the bug. All right. Well, we've got a lot of pink code down here. And looking at line 11, let's diagnose this. So we've got start paragraph or open paragraph and close paragraph. What's wrong with this open paragraph tag or start paragraph tag? It doesn't have the other symbol, right? Well, and now, looking over here, uh, so instead of putting the uh, greater than symbol, they put a period, and it caused a lot of pink code to happen. Now, that was just a matter of mistyping, right? So now we can fix that. Hold down your shift key, put in the correct symbol, and now it shows up. All right, let's finish that one. And we're on to B, debug the pink tags. Use your debugging skills to figure out why the tags are pink. OK. Debug the pink tags. Someone has submitted a bug report on this web page. Can you fix the bug? What they expected to happen is that the code should not be pink. And what happened instead is there is pink code near line 8 and line 14. Find and fix the problem that is causing the bug. OK, so line 8 and line 14 is where the, oh, OK. So I can already tell line 7 here is where the error is that's causing the pink code on line 8. So what do we need here? We need to fix this paragraph, right? The start paragraph tag is correct, but the end paragraph tag is not. It needs the P. But I put the P in the wrong place, didn't I? What do I need to do? Well, let's look at another one that's correct, right? Right here, this paragraph was done correctly. Open and close, or start and end. So let's remove that, move our cursor over, put in that slash mark. Now it's correct. Now let's look down here and see what's wrong with this code. Uh, same thing that was wrong with the last one. So the start paragraph is correct, but the end paragraph is not correct because they put a period instead of the greater than symbol. So that fixes that. And all of the pink error marks are gone. So let's finish that one. Let's move on to Debug the subheadings. Use your debugging skills to figure out why some subheadings are smaller than others. All right. Debugging skills, y'all. We're getting it. Debug the pink tags. Someone has submitted a bug report on this web page. Can you fix the bug? What I expected to happen is that the code should not be pink. But what happened instead is there is pink code near line 12 and line 14. So. Let's jump in here and fix their programming errors. Let's fix these bugs. All right, so 
They've got a froglet on line 12, starting with an H3 and ends with an H2. Well, we can see that eggs is an H3, tadpole is an H3, and it shows up over here the way they want it to. So let's change this end H3. That fixes that. And then down here on adult, starts with H3, ends with H2. So let's change the end to an H3. And that's that. It fixes that problem. Let's finish. And we're on C. Debug the subheadings. Or wait, no, that's what we just did, right? Yeah. And we finished it. There. Now it gave me credit. OK. Add larger heading. Add a large heading to the top of a web page. OK. Here's a great article on modes of transportation. Can you add a catchy large heading and title it? Do this. Add a larger heading at the top of the article. All right, so the top of our article, where it says this article talks about different forms of transportation on land, sea, and air, well, <laughs> there's no heading, right? We have headers for the different sections, but not a main heading. And the headers for the different sections are H2. So let's put our cursor at the end of line five in the code. So at the end of the body, uh, start body tag, and hit your enter key to create a blank line six in the code. And then we're going to create an H1 tag. So start H1, and then we're going to type in, let's just put transportation, types of transportation. And then end H1, close it out. Beautiful, types of transportation. Our secondary headers are smaller than our big header, which exists on line six of our code. It looks great. Let's finish. And we've done all of these practices on debugging. So let's finish. And that puts us on bubble nine. Headings and paragraphs. The author of this page added in a lot of content, but did not think about structure. All of the text is mashed together. Do this. Look through the content and decide what you think the best structure should be. Use your heading and paragraph tags to code the structure into the page. All right, so we've got all of this just jumbled together, but we can see over here in the workspace, we can see over here in the workspace, sorry, the structure that they intended to use. So my pets, let's put an H1 tag around this. Whoops. You like the video was saying, right? Even experienced programmers make mistakes. So now my pets is showing up as the main header. We, I have three different pets. This needs to be a paragraph, so let's make it a paragraph. Oop, I did it again. And close the paragraph. That separates that over there. This is a secondary heading, so let's make this an H2. And in the H2. Dog is the type of animal that Lula is, I'm assuming. So let's make this an H3 tag. And end H3. Looking good so far. Here's another paragraph. So let's separate that out by putting a paragraph tag around it. And then slowpoke is another name of an animal. So let's make that into an H2 header and close that header out. Slowpoke shows up the way we want it to over here. So you can see like every time I add some code in here, every time I surround some text with a tag, it corrects the way it looks over here. Instead of just being in this jumbled mess, right? the website is starting to make a lot more sense. So it's adding structure to the web page. 
page three again for the type of animal it is. And H3, another paragraph, and paragraph, another type of animal, so that's an H2 tag. And, or the name of the animal, wait, hold on, hamster, is the name of my fish. Okay, hamster is the name of my fish. Gotcha. So hamster is the name, like Slowpoke is the name, and Lula is the name of the dog. Slowpoke's the name of the turtle. Hamster is the name of this kid's fish. Alrighty then. Okay. So that's going to be an H3 tag, because that's the type of animal that hamster is, apparently. And then this needs to be a paragraph. Let's close that out. Beautiful. So now everything is organized and makes sense over here. Cool. So let's finish. And that moves us on to bubble 10. Oh, wow. Lots of challenges. OK. So we're going to do A through E. And if you want to, you can do F where it's HTML free play. So let's start with A, extra code line break. Learn how to make new lines without starting a new paragraph. You can use this code to add. Sorry about that interruption. Another intercom announcement. OK. Web poetry, extra code line break. Learn how to make new lines without starting a new paragraph. You can use this code to add poems or lists to your page. All right, let's jump in. In some situations, like a poem or a list, you'll want to start a new line inside the same paragraph, like you might do in poetry. You can use the line break tag for this. So that BR. Do this. Read the HTML and look for where the line break code is used to separate the lines in the poem. And then add two more line breaks to separate out the other lines in the poem. OK. So we've got a break here. A break here. Need, I can't really brag, needs a break. So at the end of line 9, BR. And then till I have every tag, needs a line break. And I think that gets it. It says note, um, or tip, the break tag is useful for writing ad or addresses or poems. And note, use the break tag to enter line breaks, not to separate paragraphs. Always separate each paragraph with its own set of open and close paragraph tags. OK? So you'll notice that the start paragraph and end paragraph tags are surrounding the entire poem. Now, if I were to put a start paragraph and end paragraph tag between each line of this poem, it would make it so that it was double spaced. But since they didn't want it double spaced, the line break tag works best. So let's finish. And let's do extra code horizontal rule. Learn the code for making a horizontal rule and practice using it. All right. Extra code horizontal rule. In some situations, you'll want to insert a horizontal line or rule to break up themes in your page. You can use the horizontal rule HR tag for this. Do this. Read the HTML and look for where the horizontal rule code is used to add a horizontal rule in the web page. Add more horizontal rules to break up the page by theme. Alrighty. So let me pause for just a second. All right, we're back. OK, so this horizontal rule tag is creating this line here. You can see. Let me turn the inspector on. Well, 
that's not gonna help us much. Turn the inspector off, okay. So you can see the horizontal rule is on line eight, right after this paragraph where it says, we live on an awesome planet. So here's that paragraph, we live on an awesome planet. Here's the horizontal rule. And you can see it just makes this text, it just makes this line that goes across. It kind of separates the ideas on the page. So where should the next one go? Well, turn that off. The next one should probably be after the desert section. So after some species, fennec fox, desert tortoise, and camel. And let's turn the inspector tool on. And that shows up on level, or not level 11, but line 11 in our code. Turn the inspector off. So down here, so I'll put my cursor at the end of line 11 in the code, hit my enter key to create an empty line 12, and I'm going to put that horizontal rule code there on line 12, and it creates that line going across the page on my website over here. So let's look for where this is on line 15, and let's put another horizontal rule right below that on line 15. So and put my cursor at the end of line 15 after the end h4 tag, enter down, HR tag, it's that there. And then to have uniform here, let's put one after blobfish. And I can see blobfish is down here on line 19, so I'll enter down, put another HR tag there. So now that each section has its own uh, sort of area to exist within. Let's finish. Let's go to the next one. C, extra code special character. Learn the code for the special character and practice using it. Okay. As you have learned, the character uh, less than is used for tags. If we want the character to show up as a less than symbol in a paragraph, we need to use the special code ampersand LT semicolon. That right there is an ampersand. And then the letter T, or letter L, letter T, and the semicolon right there. Do this. And the ampersand is an and symbol. It means and, right? Do this. Read the HTML and look for where the and LT, or look for where the special character code is used. Add a less than sign and three wherever you see the word heart to make the page more fun. Okay, let me pause. All right, I think I understand what's going on here. So it wants us to find the word heart, which we find that here, and then we're gonna add this code. So we're gonna do the ampersand, which is shift, and hold down your shift key, and look for the number seven up where your numbers are on your keyboard. So hold down shift and hit your seven and that'll make the ampersand. And then we need to put in LT and the semicolon. And after the semicolon, we're going to put in the number three. So what that's doing, and then we'll take out the word heart here. Highlight it, backspace. So now, fun facts about the heart, right? So this code right here is making that less than symbol. And then we can see on line seven here, where is the heart located, right? Shows up over here, where's the heart located? Your heart is located in the center of your chest. All right, let's find a heartbeat. Do, 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 do. There's the word heart again. Where is it over here? Right here. So let's put ampersand LT semicolon number three. Turns that into a heart symbol. Blood the rest of the body. Your heart works hard. So let's turn that into LT semicolon three. Your heart works hard. Do it right here again on line 10, ampersand LT semicolon 3. 
What a day. Is there another heart showing up anywhere? Bonus fact, laughing again is good for your heart. Okay. T. Semicolon three. So now we've got hearts everywhere on here. Let's finish. And now we're on D, extra code special character, some more special character stuff. This time it's the greater than symbol. Learn the code for the special character and practice using it. OK. As you have learned, the greater than symbol is used to close tags. If these symbols are also in your text, the browser might mix them with tags. To avoid this, we should use the special code ampersand GT semicolon anywhere we want the greater than symbol to show up on a web page. Your teacher is making an online worksheet to teach younger students how to use the greater than sign in math and needs your help adding the proper sign. Do this. Read the HTML and look for where the, um, the special character code is used is already used twice. Use the special code to add the greater than symbol where needed to complete the teacher's worksheet. All right. So let's find where it's used. Right here. Looks like it's used properly on line seven. Teachers, if you have any alarm Okay, we're back. All right, so down here, it looks like we need the code right there. So to say uh, right here, right, she made 21 sandwiches and 21 is greater than 14. So let's put this in here. So we need an ampersand GT semicolon. Right, so now 21 is greater than 14. And then let's see, Leo and Jillian each think they have more food. Leo counts 17 crackers in his bowl and Jillian counts 12. If 17 is greater than 12, so ampersand GT semicolon, and that should correct it over here, yep. Okay, cool, and that finishes that one. So now you know how to get the less than and greater than symbol into your website despite those symbols being used as open and closing tags. The ampersand character, this guy, can cause errors in your HTML code because it is actually used for other special characters like the less than symbol um, as it's encoded as ampersand LT semicolon and double quotation marks is encoded as ampersand Q U O T. To use the ampersand character in a paragraph correctly, you need the special code and amp semicolon. Yes, you need an ampersand to encode an ampersand. In this activity, you'll make up a list of some of your favorite things and practice using ampersands. Okay, do this. Read the HTML and look for where the ampersand code is used correctly. Replace the ampersand that is causing pink code with a special code for the symbol. Okay. Fill in the blank categories or add your own using the new code. Try to come up with answers that use the symbol. Okay. So favorite store, H and M, see how that works. So the amp and ampersand amp semicolon, right? puts that ampersand right here on the website. So H&M is their favorite store. Um, and then they have this and that up here as their header. So this part right here in the code is making this ampersand appear correctly. And then we've got an error here, so let's fix that. So it should be amp semicolon, whoop, semicolon, not a colon. That fixes that pink code. Um, favorite candy is my favorite candy. Um, I don't really have a favorite candy. I love beef jerky. So I'm putting beef jerky in here. I'll say beef jerky and um, Butterfingers. 
And then favorite food food combination is let's see my favorite food combo. Let's say chicken and waffles. And then school colors are black and gold. My favorite movie, or let's say favorite movies, so that we can throw an and in here. I will say October Sky and Let's think about this. October Sky and, ooh, Fox and The Hound. There we go. Those are my two favorite movies. Fox and The Hound always is a tearjerker for me. But that shows up great over here. No pink code, no errors, nothing to debug. Works great. And again, if you want to go into HTML free play, you certainly can. But this is the end of this lesson, the end of this video. I know it was a long one, but you've got the entire week to work on it and knock it out. So with just this lesson to do, you should be just fine in getting your work done. So that's it, guys. I hope you had a good time learning how to make headers and then learning how to do special characters and line breaks with the challenges. Cool. And when you are done with all of the challenges, click on the finish button down there. And your next lesson will be a mini project on HTML, creating an HTML web page. So that's it for this one, though.